Packet Tracer 8.5.1. Looks like we are presented a table that has the devices listed, the associated interfaces, IP addresses, and subnet mask as well as default gateway. Task one, step one, connect PC1A to the first port on switch S1 and PC1B to the second port on switch S1 using the proper cable. Proper cable in this instance would be a straight through cable because the PC and switch do not send and receive on the same pins. First port. Connect PC1B to the second port on the switch. All right. Um, so let's click on router R2. An exam on the configuration using the config tab. All right, there are two fast Ethernet interfaces and two serial interfaces. I just uh, click F0 slash 0. And F0 slash 1. Note that F0 slash 1 does not have an IP address and such that mask. F0 slash 0 does. I'm going to reference the topology diagram. Look up the variables for R2. Okay, F0 slash 0 of R2 IP address is 172.16.255. 254 and slash 16 subnet mask. I see those variables configured accordingly here. Okay. All right, the instructions state connect the proper interface on the router to interface F024 on the switch. Again, I will use a straight through cable because the pins on uh, the router will not uh, conflict with the uh, sending pins on the switch. Remember, F0 slash 0 is the interface with the IP address, so we will uh, connect that interface to the switch. All right. The next step states click on both routers and examine the configuration using the config tab. Connect the routers together using the proper interfaces and proper cable. Okay, I see that S000 been configured with the IP address and subnet mask. F001 is not. Came back to F000. And I'm going to reference the topology diagram and I see that F000 should have 10, 10, 10, 5, 
and a slash 30 subnet mask. And I see that uh, the interface has been configured accordingly. I'll go to R1, check it out. Well, let's go to the topology diagram table and look at S000 and we see that it should be configured with 10, 10, 10, 6, slash 30, right? And I see that S000 of R1 has been configured with the clock rate. I mean, let, let's go back to R2, and I see that uh, there is no clock rate on R2, which is okay. So that means that when I connect the two devices, I need to be sure that R1 will be the DCE, or have the DCE connection, and uh, R2 will have the DTE connection. Remember the DCE connection uh, will be the clock for the connected devices. So I'll go to the uh, connections button, scroll to the serial cables, and I'll select a serial DCE connected to R1 S000 because that's the clock in, and the other end will go to S000 of R2. All right, click on router R1 and, and examine the configuration using the config tab. Okay, I see that F00 has been configured with IP address and subnet mask. Just doing a double check. Okay, the appropriate IP address has been and subnet mask have been assigned to F00. Okay, now I'll need to connect the proper interface on the router to the proper interface on the equal server using the proper cable. Well, PCs or servers and routers transmit on the same pins, so this type of connection will require a crossover cable. We get a green light. Note what happens if or when we use the straight through cable. We do not get green lights. Okay. So I need to uh, reconnect the devices using the proper cable which is a crossover cable. Okay, now it's time to verify connectivity. On command pop prompt on the desktop, I need to ping 192.168.254.254. Well, what device is that? It looks like Eagle Server. were successful. 
So we were able to send a packet from the PC to the switch to the default gateway through the border router along the WAN link to the default gateway of the destination device onto the destination device and reverse the path. All right, uh, now we should uh, check the configuration by clicking the Check Results button. Okay, congratulations on completing this activity. And we could get a, a granular view by clicking the Assessment Items. Okay, on to task two. Step one. It's a good idea to read this paragraph at your leisure. On to entering the physical workspace. This is the uh, physical workspace tab. Okay, we are instructed to click on the central city. Then uh, Click the central office building. Okay, after clicking the uh, central office, we see the floor plan. Well, actually, we see what looks to be a wiring closet. And part of the floor plan, to see more of the floor plan, we need to go to view and zoom out. We could do so by routinely uh, selecting the zoom out or using the shortcut key combination control plus U. I'll use control plus U. Right. I'll go ahead and uh, click on the wiring closet. And there we see uh, R2 and S1. I do a zoom out, control U. Also, we see PC1A and PC1B. Okay, let's uh, zoom in, control I. Get a better view of the cables used. 
right? We see the Ethernet cable that's connecting the router R2 to S1. Uh, actually goes from this point on uh, R2 to port 24 on uh, S1. These two cables connect the two PCs to S1. Remember, we uh, attach cables to S01 and S02. All right, we are instructed to click on inner city on the navigation bar. Okay, I selected, I clicked the navigation bar and now I need to click inner city. All right. Then repeat the steps to view the equipment installed in ISP. City. Right. I'll go ahead and select the ISP closet. And here I see looks to be a router, it's R1. There's an Ethernet cable connected to F00. And we know that's going to the Eagle server that's located here. And we also see a serial cable that's connected to serial 000. And we know that's our leaf line that leads to R2. At the other location, okay. we'll go back to the other location to uh, view the uh, serial cable there. And there is the uh, serial cable that's connected to S000 of R2. Okay. And notice the buttons that are located at the lower part of the uh, physical workspace. These buttons are associated with the particular device panels that are open. Okay. I have uh, R1 and R2 configuration panels open. If I were to uh, click R2 button it was just to activate the uh, R2 panel or bring it to the front. If I were to click the uh, X just right of R2, it'll close the panel. And I'll do the same for R1. All right, to go back to the logical workspace, just click the logical workspace tab. 